now to uh, Samanza Gorge, who is at the Sugar Ray Kulu Stadium in Claremont, where the funeral service is currently taking place. Well, we've just moved from the Sugar Ray Kulu Stadium. We are now at uh, Chesterville Cemetery, where there is a hero's acre. That's where the late Eric Stalin Mchali will be laid to rest. Behind me is his final resting place. Is his final resting place. Allow me to step out of the shot and ask my colleague Nkanyi Somdlalose to give you a sense of what is happening in the background. We are expecting the procession to arrive any minute from now. That's where all the dignitaries and the family members will be seated and Ubabu Mchali will be laid to rest. Earlier on, all speakers who spoke at the stadium paying tribute to him, they described him as a loyal, dedicated and disciplined member of the SACP as well as the ANC. They said he undertook the struggle selflessly. He didn't want anything in return. But let me tell you what will happen here. It's part three of the official special funeral. We expect that the military will be continuing with all the processes here in line with the program. They will then unwrap the flag and give it to the family members. After that, there will be a gun salute and then the coffin of the late struggle icon will be lowered. But right now I'm joined by the SACP Secretary in Guazulu Natal, Obabu Temba Mtembo, whom I've just hijacked. Babu Mvelasa, it's a very sad day today in South Africa. Let's just, re let's just recap on what has transpired today in sending off this late struggle hero. Mm. Yes, uh, it's a, f a very sad day indeed uh, in losing one of uh, the pillars uh, of our struggle, uh, who was also a pillar in the SACP uh, as, as well. Uh, so actually what has taken place today is befitting of the character of the person uh, himself, as it was said, that it was an epitome of uh, the alliance. That's why we, we, we must say that we are quite satisfied and happy uh, that uh, that that was reflected in the funeral service it, itself. President Cyril Ramaphosa called him Mr. Unity when he visited his family last week Sunday and he preached the issue of unity within the alliance. As we speak, you are having serious issues within the alliance in Guazulu Natal as well as national. I think uh, Unity, uh, to describe uh, Comrade Stalin, is a, a perfect uh, characterization, uh, is a perfect description of what uh, Comrade Stalin uh, was. Uh, yes, uh, they have, we have a very, we used to have a very shaky uh, relationship in the, in the alliance, but through the advice of Stalin, uh, we have been able to uh, now starting to find each other uh, in strengthening uh, this alliance. As we have seen in the memorial services, we organize it together as well as uh, this uh, in, in, in the funeral, uh, the, the, the alliance uh, was uh, organizing uh, itself together. Uh, there was no uh, side uh, activity of each uh, a, a component of the uh, alliance. So that's what uh, makes us to have a, a hope that we'll uh, try by all means uh, to heed to what Comrade Stalin uh, was uh, he, he t teaches us. Uh, teach us. One of the things he was passionate about was the issue of political education. Mm. As the alliance, you seem to be struggling with that. You seem to have taken your foot off the pedal when it comes to educating your members politically. How are you going to take that moving forward? I think in, uh, to honor Comrade Salim, uh, in Guazulu Natal, we have actually uh, decided to uh, have a, a program that will be named after Comrade Stalin, uh, Eric Kimjali uh, Stalin uh, political classes that you are going to uh, have, where each and every branch must go through uh, those uh, a program of political education. Okay, Mvelase, thank you very much for your time. Well, if you can allow me, I think we still have time. I see a member of the Central Committee of the SACP, Eunice Karimbaba. If you can just join us, please, let me just get a quick comment from him. How, how are you going to keep the legacy of Ubabu Eric, who's starting in Charlie alive? Well, one of the things Comrade Mchali focused on, interestingly, was uh, the youth. 
and drawing to the Communist Party young people. And he insisted that he remained a member, despite his age, uh, of the Young Communist League. So he paid much attention to political education. And I think that's one area in which uh, the Communist Party will uh, persist he, with his legacy. Obviously, he came from the old school of Marxism, and he still held to the view of a di dictatorship of the proletariat and traditional Marxism. And he was quite keen to engage, though, with the new generation of Marxists who have been a bit more sensitive to the changes that have taken place in the post-1990 global arena. So he was very good for engaging with uh, some of the dominant views within the Communist Party about how to manage our program for socialism in the current era. One of those would be the issue of social economic challenges facing the working class today. Surely that would have pained him to see that those conditions have not changed. Well, I wouldn't say the conditions haven't changed. They have changed substantially, but not substantially enough. And given the slowdown in economic growth, the job losses have occurred over the last few years, and the other economic challenges, obviously the working class and the poor and the lower income earners in particular have had to bear disproportionately the consequences of our failure to grow the economy. However, things are beginning to turn around. There's the new uh, president's um, stimulus package. Uh, there are attempts also uh, to do a whole lot of things to get the economy going. But ultimately, it's a relationship between uh, government, parliament, business and the union movement and civil society to get the economy going. It's not just the responsibility of the government or parliament alone, nor indeed is it the responsibility of the tripartite alliance. We all have to work together while maintaining our respective positions to get, in fact, the economy growing. And the private sector needs to realize that it's in its own interest to work with government. Now, of course, Comrade um, Charlie, uh, with his background, he served in all three structures of the alliance, was particularly concerned about the effect of the slowdown in economic growth on the working class. That was his major preoccupation. So again, uh, the Communist Party, we need to do more to focus on the needs and interests of the working class and its allies. He was a remarkable veteran in his own way. Uh, despite his failing health, he continued to attend uh, Central Committee meetings until very recently. And he continued to play a role in political education. And, of course, he continued to read the publications of the Communist Party. And he's now one of the few uh, uh, veterans of that era who was around until this week. And uh, we regret the loss of this era. We regret also that the histories have not been written. There are others around of his age and also of failing health whose histories are very important, not just to the Communist Party and the Alliance, but to the country as a whole. Okay, thank you very much for time. That's Eunice Karim, who's a member of the Central Committee of the SACP, saying Ubabum Chali is one of the unsung heroes in the South African struggle.